What happens when you wire 50 bargain bin speakers into a single geodesic dome for 360 degree sound? I'm honestly not sure, but we're going to find out together. Now, these tiny little guys are fun, but bass is off the table. So today, the goal is higher. The mids. Pun intended. And why a dome? It's fun, it's over the top, and I've never done it before. How do you think it will sound? These speakers all share one chamber, and tuning is done with adjustable aperiodic vents. So a few questions. What is an aperiodic vent? Why am I using something I can barely pronounce? And what kind of chaos is wiring 50 speakers to a singular output? Let's start with the enclosure plan. My printer is 305 by 305, and this dome is about 325 overall. So it's going to get sliced and diced and printed in segments. The quick change vents need a secure attachment. So I'm using metric trapezoidal threads as they print very, very nicely. Also, these vents need to actually vent. So the dome sits up on a stand about 30 millimeters high, and this creates breathing room, and it hides the wiring, and it keeps the whole build looking very, very seamless. We have a vision, we have a plan, and now the hard part. We have to do this without any flaws. So first up, printing, and then some more printing. This is a printing channel after all. About those aperiodic vents. They're a controlled leak, a resistive path that lets pressure bleed off in a controlled and predictable way. I printed replacement cartridges so I can pack measured polyfill and tune by mass and compression. The trapezoidal threads make on-the-fly tuning easy. I am starting with 20 centimeters squared total of vent area split across six vents and one and a half grains of polyfill per cartridge. Now, how do you wire 50 speakers without melting an amp? All parallel would basically be a short, and all series is a garden hose through a coffee straw. So we mix 5 in series, and then 10 of those strings in parallel for a 5S 10P configuration. So it's 4 ohms, which is very amp friendly. Now if you're measuring DC, you will see about 3.75 ohms, because the RE is 7.5, but nominal will be 4 ohms. Bonus, if one driver dies, only that 5 quit and the other seven series keep going. With a speaker like this, why stop at sound? A lot of the builds here are functional art, so this one's no different. It glows. This clear diffuser is lit by 39 LEDs. They're static right now, but with a tiny little controller, they could be a music visualizer as well. If that's something you'd like to see, drop a comment. And if you're new here, Subscribe and then tick that little bell so you don't miss the next ridiculous idea. Now, who better to get a hold of for a custom controller board than PCBWay? They have amazing products and great turnaround time on all of their offerings. Whether it is a custom 3D print, a one-off circuit board, or fancy CNC work, they have never let me down and I always recommend checking them out for any of your DIY maker needs. They are currently running a special on TPU, so check that out as well. They also offer an easy way to support the channel and get your maker needs filled by using the link in the description. It's tied directly to me, and it helps the channel continue to create the one-of-a-kind projects you have all grown to love. Time to tune. The fun part is, I don't have to reprint anything. I just swap those little cartridges. It's the same box, it's the same drivers, it's the same airspace. The only variable is how much polyfill I put in and how tightly I compress it. Follow that up with a quick sweep and a quick listen until I'm satisfied. I'm hunting for that peak around resonance to kind of relax and then for those mids to open up. We are not trying to rattle windows. We are not trying to knock pictures off the walls. We just want a smoother, friendlier mid-range. This speaker also needs to be protected from killer frequencies at higher volumes. 
A full sweep from the Dats V3 will not kill these speakers, but powering them at full tilt and the fragile Mylar cones will self-destruct from the low frequencies. So ideally, a 300 hertz high pass filter coupled with a 900 hertz crossover to a woofer channel would be the best. And if we really are going for some professional sound, a DSP to kind of level the peaks off would be the way to go. Now, why are the vents on the bottom? Well, easy answer is aesthetics. Honestly, they would have been better on the dome, but they looked out of place. So down firing they are. Only issue was then I needed space that they could actually vent the air into. Which leads to the standoffs. The 30 millimeters gives an effective area that is magnitudes larger than the vent surface area. Which means, though, the air has to turn, it won't choke the vents to the point that they no longer function. It also gave the perfect place to hide the speaker and light wiring terminals. You've seen the chaos, you've seen the theory, now let's hear it. Here's the final REW curve from that exact setup. I will flash it quick so we don't kill the vibe. Feel free to pause though if this graph is your vibe. Now, what I love is how it fills the room. It's aiming for that omniish energy, but like any multi-speaker enclosure, timing is that gremlin you'll never quite tame. You can only be perfectly time aligned for a single listening spot. So the closer drivers want a little bit of a delay so that the airspeed and the sound waves can match. So perfect omni is it's kind of a moving target and that's just not feasible and that's fine. This project was not about making it perfect. This project was about making it. So what happens when you wire 50 bargain speakers into a geodesic dome? First, somewhere around driver number 30, you question the life choices that led you here. And sadly, you start to regret some of them. Second, you get a flavor of 360 degree sound that I have not heard anywhere else. Now, will 50 closeouts beat a good bookshelf pair? No, no chance. And that's okay. The whole point was to turn cheap parts into a fun experience and to learn about it along the way. I definitely did. How about you? I've also got about 120 more tiny closeout drivers staring at me. What should I build next? Drop ideas in the comments, and if you're new here, do not forget to subscribe and ring the little bell so you do not miss any of the chaos in the future. Thanks for watching. Until next time, later.